Yes, indeed, the sounds of the Ganker, the legendary brew guy there. And apparently he said that he would do the follow-up to his Ganker song and record it completely naked. I don't want any kind of proof as to whether that happened. We'll just assume it did. Anyway, Blue Please here on Wild Radio with uh, Total Biscuit. And yes, it's going to be a shorter show than usual. Because of all this RP, PvP, uproar and all that kind of thing, I didn't have the time I wished to prepare this show properly, as we also had a problem in Scullamans a little bit earlier with a certain shame, an epic quest that didn't really work out the way we planned. Never mind. Never mind. Uh, hopefully I'll be back next week with a full-length show and properly prepared instead of rambling my way through one and a half hours of complete gibberish. It'll be two hours of complete gibberish. Right, we have had some more suggestions for our working as intended section and of course the idea this time is how would you improve the Alterac Valley so Royal Arcanist came up with this idea put more power into the NPCs right now they are an unorganized rabble well that's uh, kind of like the players are really and uh, that lets themselves get killed while a massive zerg of people penetrate their battle line you should not be able to zerg the valley and kill everything in 10 minutes I think they need to put more importance into the NPCs, making the Zerg strive to capture resource points and summoning the cavalry charges. They should certainly add more troop assaults that players can summon by completing certain quotas of items and resources. Also, Alterant Valley should have a greater impact on the world. The background of the valley is that they are looking for some kind of artifact there. Perhaps if you win the battleground enough times, your faction will get some sort of bonus. A very good idea. Progressive content right there, as suggested by Royal Arcanist. Dr. Spiffy comes up with this. Have the NPCs be the main force in the game once more. So the players are more of a support force, so have to capture the mines to upgrade their weapons and get more supplies for your faction to produce more troops. The players should not be able to hold off the opposing NPCs by themselves. They should have to support the troops. In other words, add more NPCs and just have them upgraded by quests that the players must do. An interesting idea. It does remind me a little bit of the Tides of Blood map, a mod modification map for the Frozen Throne in which your hero, and you were able to pick one of those, was in fact a supporting player for your main force which left your base every so often, followed the preset path and attempted to fight its way into the opponent's base. Maybe it could fight in the same way of Tides of Blood and having the NPCs as the main attack force supported by the... Obviously, that's predictable, players. That's a possibility. Philip Denton, also known as... How the hell do I pronounce that? Tiagos. 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 Yeah. Either works. He's a level 60 undead warlock from EU Stormweaver. And he says, In my opinion, Alterat Valley was originally supposed to be the means for WoW players to recreate Warcraft-style gameplay. I believe Blizzard have effectively managed this with quests and capturable graveyards, towers, and bases. However, the problem is really with the players. I believe since every time I've played AV, everyone just goes solo and battles take hours to finish with nothing being achieved. The solution would be to introduce a Battlefield 2 style commander gameplay with honor rewards for carrying out given orders and cooperating as a group. For example, if you are told to capture the graveyard and you complete that objective, you receive honor. Furthermore, another solution could be to allow guild leaders to set up guild versus guild combat which would definitely lead to more cooperation between players since they actually know each other and may have done so for some time and letting the Guildmaster have commander powers similar to Battlefield 2 would definitely add to the gameplay. A very good idea. I like that idea. It's interesting, in fact, that Alterat Valley never really seems to be Guild vs. Guild. I've always noticed that going into Alterat Valley on Dagger Spine EU involves one of two things. Either... No, I tell a lie. One of three things. First thing is, Synergy or a large, powerful guild are in the battleground with us. Since the opposing powerful guilds on the other side have seen this and think that the battle may last longer than they wish, they leave. And it involves in a complete wipe out for the Alliance who get annihilated as we, the Horde, roll over them with our power gamers in tow. Of course, the opposing side of the coin is that the Alliance do that with, say, guilds like Forte and the Corporation. They roll all the way back against our leaderless MC, you know, unequipped rabble, and we die. The third option is, of course, that neither of those happens, and that we just get two Zergs and we get a big stalemate. Why is it that Synergy and Forte have never really clashed properly? in the battlegrounds. I don't know what happens on your servers, whether you do see these epic guild clashes, but I tend to find that it's either one or the other. One side has their big guild in, and the other side does not. Whether this is 
simply due to bad luck, or whether it's because they're deliberately leaving in order to find an easier battleground, well, I don't know. But it is unfortunate. Okay. Right. Someone else, also known as Yogo, Chris Hagen, said this. In Battlegrounds, teamwork is the key to win. The Zerg doesn't matter. Without teamwork, it won't work. Blizzard should add more teamwork points. You can't progress on the field if you don't take them out. So, in other words, choke points and objectives that need to be captured. So, you need to progress your way across the battlefield rather than Zerging it. Blizzard should also make some more bosses for the Alliance and Horde. Currently, with all the new gear, they become easier and easier to take down. Can't argue with that. In my opinion, they were claimed to be battle winners. If you had your boss out, you would win. But in this case, that is not the case. Good ideas from Yogo there. Now, I asked earlier what battlegrounds are like on RPPVP, sorry, RPPVP servers. What am I talking about? Role-playing servers. And I've got a report from Jaspel Verdi from the Earthen Ring European RP server. And he says this. Warsong Gulch is ruled by the few sex teams who make the effort to organise themselves. Pickup groups will lose all the time to set up groups, which I'm sure is the case in regular servers. Yes, they will. There is little or no role-playing in Warsong Gulch, and justifiably so since it's impractical to RP while you're fighting for your life and tasty honour points. Ultimate Valley only runs if the Horde want to. What makes it worse is that the Horde leave Alterat Valley if they start to lose. This is, in fact, the case on other servers as well. This has happened on Daggerspine with both Alliance and Horde. They are both equally guilty. A couple of the raid leaders will then post in the Earth and Ring realm form, proclaiming the Alliance as Zergers and being bad sportsmen for some absurd reason. There is some RP and AV since it's such a large battleground and you're not always facing the enemy. That you can play out storylines in peace at times. Horde rules the roost in Warsong Gulch. Alliance have perfected AV. This is why battlegrounds are a bit impractical on the Earthen Ring. The Horde will just AFK in Warsong if they come up against another set team because they know they won't have to wait long for another match, which they can win against a pickup group. Alliance prefer Alterat Valley because we are a lot more organised on a larger scale, and I believe Alliance have only lost one Alterat Valley out of two dozen or so games. So and that sort of gives a little bit of impetus to my point that I made earlier that there are certain systems in World of Warcraft that do not encourage PV, uh, sorry, role playing, and indeed on role playing servers that isn't necessarily happening. Hmm. Unfortunate. Right. Okay. Running out of time here and running out of content, and quite frankly, my throat hurts. I should have had a drink earlier, but never mind. I'm going to go and get a drink in about ten minutes and, of course, leave you with a little bit of ending show music. However, there is time to give out a few shout-outs. Last time I said I wouldn't be giving shout-outs out, but, uh, well, people ask, so I should provide here to serve the public and all that jazz. Shout-out, please. From Liam Hanford. Hey, loved your blue please shows. I'm on the Ally Kia PvP server. Could I get a shout out to ECO myself and D in Half Pint Heroes Guild? Thanks for lending me 24 gold for my Mount D. Cheers, mate. By the way, we are gnomes, so like the shout out would make up for having a robo chicken for a mount. Well, you are gnomes, so you are therefore gank on sight, I'm afraid, but you do get your shout out before your inevitable demise. A shout out, of course, goes out to A. I can't pronounce his name, I never can. I-O-I-I-D, it is his birthday, hallelujah, and uh, yes, well done, it's your birthday, you're not quite dead yet, fantastic. So, if there are any other shout-outs, then send me a PM, do not sa send me a DCC chat request, because I will ignore it. PM. Shout-out goes out to the Lords of England on the EU Burning Blade server, who are doing Ragnaros right now. Cheers, that's from Sylvanus. A shout-out goes out to our guild from Soka. It's the Halibuts on the Daggerspine EU Horde. Shout-out to the Inner Sanctum Guild on the Silver Moon server, and that's by Ion ASS. It always sounds like Ion Arse to me. Crazy. A shout-out goes out, of course, to Night Talon, Idiots, Morans, and GCSE Failure Chris. Nice. Right, I think it's about time to head out. No throw car, D10 does not rock. D20 all the way, and until death, you infidel. Okay. Thank you for listening to Blue Please tonight. Apparently I'm supposed to pronounce car on MP's name correctly. Well, I can't. Oh dear, I'm getting more shout-out requests. Better get those out to everyone that wants them. Dr. Spiffy sends a shout-out to all the RPers who stand up for their beliefs. 
Funky monkey. Pronounce my name just because you can. Well, it's not that tricky, really, is it? Let's be realistic. Stinky Ricks wants a shout-out to the Knights of Arcadia on Dark Iron. An excellent group of people, if I may say so. Shout-out goes out to the second crew, Abashi Empire, on the oncoming... Uh, upcoming PvP RP server. And that's from Varska. Shout-out goes out to Will and his cat, who needs a shout-out. Apparently, they both rock. It's a scary thought, folks. Yes, it is indeed. Shout-out goes out to the Midnight Sun Order on Zenada. And to anyone else who did want a shout-out, unfortunately, there's just too many of you. One final shout-out must go out to our much-loved and much-derided community manager. It's Thundergot, of course, the one and only. And, of course, the tech lead, who is a gnome, but we will forgive him for that. Shout-out to Cross, who got his arcanist panties. That sounds a bit worrying. Infidel gets a shout-out to... Him and his brother, Infidel and Velocity. Oh dear, more and more shout out. Shout out to everyone on the Thunderhorn EU in UBRS with Monkey. Shout out to the Alliance Watch on the Earth and Ring, that's from Sind. Uh, shout out to Efferate on the Burning Blade server, that's from DTU. And a shout out to Kiki Jiki for being epic. Yeah, I found the sound sample eventually. One more shout-out. One more, that's it. No more. I can't have an entire show consisting of shout-outs. Shout-out to our fangirls. That's from Athelus. Shout-out to Nathaniel and Kiki Jiki. They are getting married. Oh, dear God. And a shout-out to the poor rabbit in DM. That's from Anvilbeard. Right, that is it. No more shout-outs. Thank you for listening to Blue Please tonight. We'll be back on next week at this. No, it won't be the same time. It'll be an hour earlier. The show was delayed. The show was shorter than it should have been. It wasn't as prepared as it should have been. But then again, a lot of drama happened. We have addressed the issues of role-playing in World of Warcraft and hopefully have put the minds of those concerned about their role-playing community to rest as regards to the World of Warcraft Radio RP PvP Guild. I've been Total Biscuit. This has been the Blue Please Show. Next show will be on... The, that is, of course, Tuesday, the Downtime Down Under musical entertainment show. Six hours of requests ending with the Iron Forged Metal Show with myself at... 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's 6 p.m. British Standard Time. It kicks off at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is 2 p.m. British Standard Time. If you're in some other crazy moon time, you can work it out yourself. Wednesday, Know Your Role, the Role Play and Midweek Review Centric Show. That's, of course, with Medros. Thursday, the Law Based Show Town Hall. That's with Eldricht. And, of course, Saturday, the one and only Saturdays with Athelus and Blue Please returning at the European slot of 7 p.m. British Standard Time. That's 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with pre-show music. You'll be listening to Blue, please. Thanks for listening tonight, guys. I shall see you on Tuesday for the Iron Forge Metal Show. And just to warm you up in advance for that particular show, here's something that everyone's been asking for. So that's exactly what you're going to get. We get it on every show, and people never see the tire of it. And rightly so. Goes out to all the warriors out there. Man of War, Warriors of the World United. Thank you for listening tonight. It's good night from me. It's good night from the Murloc. <laughs> Enjoy.